City of Heroes is a video game that is renowned for its overwhelming number of costume options that you can create for your superhero character to wear as it interacts with the world. Photoshop doesn't have quite as many options for its costume, but in the interface tab of the Preferences menu, you get to customize much of its aesthetic. We get to the interface panel in the Preferences menu by clicking either on the Photoshop menu, hitting Preferences, dropping down to Interface, or if you're on the PC, that same menu will be found in the Edit menu, down by the Keyboard Shortcuts and Menus option. Alternately, hold down Control or Command K, brings up Preferences, and then just click on Interface. It'll be the second tab down. This is a very basic panel. The first section we see is the General section, and right at the top we have our Screen Modes. You can cycle through Screen Modes by pressing the F key repeatedly. The first screen mode, which is what we're in right now, is the standard screen mode, and we can change the background color to black or any custom color that we like. In this case, it's uh, already set to blue. So if we select a custom color, um, you know, anything you want. We can set it to bright, bright purple, if I click purple. That's a little bright for my taste, so I'm just gonna switch that back to gray. The border refers to this area around the image. Let me scoot this panel aside. Right now you can see there's a little bit of a drop shadow here. And if we switch that in the drop down menu, we can either switch that to a line or no border at all. And again, you see the changes reflected immediately in your work area. So I'm gonna keep that a drop shadow. Now the same thing happens when you press F the first time and it switches to full screen with menus. Uh, this we're not gonna see reflected immediately because we're not in this screen mode, but you get the same options for that. And then full screen mode, uh, usually just leaves your image in the center with a solid black background and no tools. Again, you don't need a border necessarily. If you have it solid black, you don't necessarily need a border because it's not going to show up anyway, but you still have those border options. The next item up under the preferences menu, let's move this aside. Take a look down here at the bottom right. I have the channels panel open and show channels in color if we check that box. That shows the red channel thumbnail is red, the green channel thumbnail is green, and the blue one is blue. So that's all that does. Uh, it's, again, this is all a preference thing. It doesn't affect performance at all. Show menu colors is a pretty important one if you're setting up your menus for optimization. For instance, in a previous tutorial, uh, let me click OK. In a previous tutorial on my select menu, I put color range in red, and that's because I use it often. I don't have it bound to a key. And uh, when I click on the select menu, I can find it real easily. I just look straight down. It's highlighted red, and I can click on it. it saves me some time. Unless we have that option checked on, we are not going to see... We're not going to see any background color in our menus. Back in the interface section, I'm going to leave that one on, like I said. Show tooltips. This yellow area right here that says determines whether to show tooltips for controls and tools is referred to as a tooltip. We click that off, it turns off. And now if we hover over something, no tooltip. Adobe's gone out of their way to provide you with tooltips for just about every item on their entire menu and in their interface at all. So I would recommend that you leave show tooltips set to on because every now and again, you're gonna come across a tool and if you don't know how to use it, this little bit of text is gonna pop up and that'll give you a hint on what its use is. Enable gestures is basically only used by Macintoshes that have multi-touch trackpads. It doesn't really matter if I have this on because I don't have any gesture capability. For me, typically I just shut this off because I don't use gestures. So that takes care of the general part. Down here in the Panels and Documents section, I'm going to switch on Auto Collapse Iconic Panels. Hit OK. What that means is any panels that I have set to Icon Mode, if I click that and go into Brush, and let's say I change some of my brush settings, the second I click out of it, it's going to collapse back into that mode. Now, personally, I like that often because I like to keep my workspace very uncluttered. I can always come over here, open it up, and just select a different option, and that'll bring up the menu again. Click here, and it goes away. So. That's one of the things that's going to be a personal preference for you. Decide whether or not you want that to go away. And there are definitely some times where I leave that checked off uh, because I work in the, say, the brush presets menu often or the brush menu. I like to have the history menu up sometimes when I work. Again, personal preference. Auto show hidden panels. Let me leave this checked on and I'll show you what that is. Click OK. If we have our panels hidden, like for instance when we press the tab key, Let's say we want to jump into the Brush Presets panel. All I have to do is come over here to the side where the panels normally are, hold my mouse there for a second, and click on Brush because the panels popped out so I can see them. Then again, as soon as I'm done, click back in here and the panels auto-hide. So back into the Photoshop interface section. Open Documents as Tabs. What that does, you can see I have several documents open here. Every time you open a new document, it'll just appear as another tab. If you have that shut off, then each document that you open appears in its own separate window. 
enable floating document window docking. Absolutely. Right now, let's say we have two separate windows here. And if I shut that off in the interface, then I try to come up here and drop it back into where all the other tabs are, I won't be able to put it up there. So I always leave that one set to on. Let's reselect that, click OK, and then I can just put that right back up here where it belongs. The reason I always have that one set to on is because I have several different groups of panels. Uh, everything's itemized depending on what it is that I'm working on. It keeps everything more organized for you, makes work faster. Restore default workspaces. If at any time you move around all the panels and everything in the essentials, design, painting, photography, new in CS5, or any of the other workspaces that you create yourself, all you have to do to reset every single one of them is back in the interface where we just saw, click on restore default workspaces. A Photoshop dialog will pop up, click OK. You can even select don't show again because you're always pretty much gonna click OK. The last section is the user interface text options. Here all I have installed is the English text, so that's the only option I have, but if you have a multilingual copy of Photoshop, you can select between the different languages here, and then as you can see, next time you restart Photoshop, it'll switch to the appropriate language, and the same thing goes for the font size. Uh, I typically like to have everything nice and small. I have good eyes, large monitor, so I don't need to worry about that, but as I get older, I'm probably gonna drop this down to the large and wear really big glasses. Uh, and then next time I re restart Photoshop, all of the words here in the user interface, such as the panels and documents, auto collapse, blah, 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 anything up here, anything in the this area, probably the menus if you're on PC, all that's gonna be a larger font size. I'm gonna drop that back to small so I don't forget. So there's your interface overview. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and send any questions that you might have to requestsatmahalo.com. Thanks for watching.